Good afternoon, everyone. Now we are going to learn about how to enter into heavenly mansions in the third heaven. Okay. Paul saw vision, visions and revelation from the Lord 14 years ago. He was caught up to the third heaven. He was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Yes, it is written in 2 Corinthians 12. Okay, one more time. Paul's vision, visions and revelation from the Lord 14 years ago, he was caught up to the third heaven. He was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Jesus also promised paradise for the repenting thief on the cross. Luke 23, 43. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So, uh, what kind of relationship between new heaven and earth and paradise? This photo okay, describes the first heaven, the second heaven, third heaven. First heaven, we, we usually call sky. And then, second heaven, uh, it could be understood as a space in between many planets. In the third heaven, referring to uh, heavenly abode, where God dwells, where many angels dwells. Okay, who can dwell in the heavens and the earth? Dwellers in new heavens and earth, in the book of Leviticus, God receives the sacrifice of only grass-eating bovine animals, Leviticus chapter 1. Okay, who can dwell in the new heavens and the earth has relationship with a sacrificial system of Old Testament. Okay, uh, God commanded his people to offer the animal sacrifice, but the animal kind of animal restricted to, confined to bovine animals. That has the horns on the head, grass eating, mobile animals, uh, referring to cows and sheep or goat. Okay, God does not accept carnivorous animals, predators. They are carrying symbols of murderers or killers. So people of God should be like bovine animals. Bovine means slow moving slow moving animals in other words peacefully living animals and horned animals simply meaning of horn is a man of authority man of power sheep deer goats okay and they have um, horns okay so the people of god must be horned according to ancient world view in the pagan world, if we are horned one, then you are king. For example, the Alexander the Great, the coin of his portrait, okay, on the head, the people attached the horns. So Alexander is understood as a horned man. Horned man means son of God. So God commanded his people to offer sacrifice, horned animals, mobile animals. Uh, it has very much deep spiritual lesson. Church history or personal Christian faith is ongoing way toward the final consummation through peaceful movement of evangelism. So mobile animal symbolically could be understood Mobile animal, uh, slow moving, it means peacefully living. So our Christian life okay, should be done peacefully. All activities should be done peaceful procedure, peaceful movement. Even evangelic movement should be done peacefully. 
We must not evangelize by uh, raging war. So, in this concept, according to this concept, uh, crusade war is unbiblical. Okay, fighting war, fighting battle, uh, by have the winning, defeating their enemies. Uh, we should not uh, evangelize like a peaceful way. Okay, what could be the ancient Hebrew letters of Bara, God created? Now, the, this lesson is connected to the former lesson. God created heavens and the earth, okay? Now, uh, according to ancient picture letter, Bara, create, uh, reveals a hidden meaning. So, God created heavens and earth, and then as we analyze according to ancient Hebrew picture letter, uh, we can get out the purpose of God's creation. The purpose of God's creation. The purpose of God's creation, we must understand, okay? <clears throat> Bara, there's a double bet, 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 and then resh and aleph. Bet, according to ancient picture letter, the bet meaning house. Or tent, in other words, dwelling place. Bad, bad. Okay, if it is doubled, doubled alphabet magnify the meaning. So it means uh, a single house may refer to many house or village or community or a nation. Okay, resh there's a human hand, and the aleph means oxen. It could be understood as horned animal, strong one, chief leader, that's Aleph. So, uh, it could, Aleph may represent all kinds of horned animals also. Okay, let us attempt to interpret it. The term of the heavens and the earth still is significant. The term of the heavens and the earth still is significant in the new creation. Okay, number one, bara may mean, bara, the word bara describes the purpose of creation of the earth. So, it means, bara means, bara, the purpose of bara is to make spacious dwelling place or many houses. Many houses, special dwelling place. So, the earth, when God created the earth, okay, God had planned to make spacious dwelling place, bad, bad, and for men, good for men, good for both men and horned animals. And that's the meaning. The okay, second interpretation, it seems to describe the character of dwellers, character of dwellers for both men and uh, ox. So I explained mobile animals, slow moving or gently moving animals. And they are grass eating horned animals like deer and goat. So uh, God imagined to produce human being. What kind of human being? Uh, horned human being, okay, as a son of God, according to the image of God. Uh, the man Adam was supposed to rule over all creatures on behalf of God so they should be powerful they should be authoritative okay but uh, their character is like a bovine animal slow moving gentle one so God expect the human being should be gentle one grass eating the peaceful one not the murderer, and they are uh, grouping together. Okay, three, man plus ox may describe this way. Man who is strong like ox. If God expect the man who is like ox. So man who is strong like ox. Second meaning, man who is strong but gentle like ox. 
Uh, do you imagine? The lifestyle of ox is gentle. Even though looking for us, no. Uh, they are very uh, obedient animal. They are number one supporter of farming, human farming, because of their uh, support. Uh, the farmers are plowing field. Mm. Okay. Uh, three, men and bovine animals by living by groups. Okay. Uh, men also living by groups. Mobile animals are living by groups. Uh, if you are the one who, uh, who love to live together, if you are as a sociable one, then you take care of, we must take care of each other, okay? Uh, taking care of each other, that's what God wants us. Uh, this is the what the ancient picture letter reveals. So, who can dwell on earth? A peaceful one, a group-oriented one, uh, giving care for each other. And then spiritually, and the, uh, as a powerful one, we are powerful one by the wisdom of God, by the spiritual authority. So uh, we can rule over all creatures. This is the concept of that this is the purpose of God's creation. Okay, it is written in the Bible. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then another word, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Okay, now I find out uh, uh, two words, the relevant word. Kingdom of heaven. Yeah, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we are trying to enter into heaven, new heavens and earth. So we must be the poor in spirit. Okay? And then blessed are the meek. The meek will inherit the earth. Okay? So it is related to each other. Okay? We must understand who are poor in spirit. What's the meaning of poor in spirit? Jesus is our shepherd and we are his sheep. The sheep, the lifestyle of sheep, symbolic meaning of sheep is humbly following and trustfully praying to God. And you look at the picture. Okay, so many sheep, they follow the one shepherd. They are obedient, humbly quietly following and that's the ship okay so when we have poor spirit when we have poor spirit in front of God we are obedient we are following we are following God's commandment whenever we have problem we trustfully humbly pray to God and we experience get the answer of God okay that's the lifestyle of the poor in spirit and then this kind of people are welcomed to enter into heavenly abode, new heavens and new earth. Okay, next. Who are the meek? There are various interpretations of the meaning of meek, but uh, confidently I interpret in this way. Those who are generous for those who I need, they are the meek. Once again, those who are generous for those who I need, who ask any help. Okay? Grass eating animals are group oriented life. Okay? Grass eating animals, they are making group oriented life. If you wish to move together, if you wish to live on together, then you must uh, work together, you must help each other. Huh? You must give hands, giving hands each other. It means uh, you must be generous to each other. When you are generous to each other, then you can make group-oriented life. Eat together, move together, work together, take care of each other. Then that's the, the meek who are generous, who are understanding for each other. That's the meek one. 
this kind of meek, the meek will inherit the earth. Okay, they are the meek, and the Lord grant them to inherit the new earth. Okay. So who can who can enter into new heavens and earth? Okay, the one who are meek, the one who are understanding, the one who are willing to give the helping hand for those who are in need, for those who are weak. Okay, this is the way uh, we can work together by group. We can wage war even by groups without helping each other, without supporting each other. Mm. We cannot do anything. So by group, if, you, if we are planning to be successful by groups, then we must take care of each other. Okay? This is the character of the meek, now, understanding, soft heart. Then they are the meek, the Lord grant the meek to inherit the new earth. Okay? It's very easy, it's very clear. So, uh, we are supposed to enter into new heavens and new earth. And we are the inheritor of new earth, new heaven. So, may God bless you. Uh, I wish you to make group-oriented life, uh, group-oriented Christian activities, uh, we enjoy success by group. Okay, we pray together. That's why Jesus promised, wherever you are gathered in my name, wherever you are gathered in groups, okay, I'll be there. Okay, that's the, the law of kingdom of God. That's the law of church, the disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay, by groups, by groups, we are going to get success by groups. We are entering into the kingdom of God. Okay, amen. It is so beautiful uh, to abide together. Brothers and sisters, when brothers and sisters uh, dwell together, that's the blessing. When we pray together, worship together, that's the sure sign of blessing. God is pleased our group activities. God is so much pleased whenever we are uh, willing to give care for each other, then uh, we are the children of God. Okay? I wish you make group-oriented, group-centered Christian life. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. See you again. See you again later on.